Mono Mono Twins, let's chat about it. This is Dai Dai Twins, two chorions, two amnions, two placentas, two fetuses. This is Mono Dai Twins, one chorion, two amnions, two, one placenta that is shared by two fetuses. This is Mono Chorionic, Mono Amniotic Twins, or Mono Mono. One chorion, one amnion, one placenta that is shared by two fetuses within one amniotic sac. Here's another representation of Momo Twins, or Mono Mono Twins. One chorion, one amnion. One placenta, two fetuses with two umbilical cords attached to that placenta. The major risk with these types of twins is cord entanglement, where their umbilical cords get tangled up between each other because there is no dividing membrane separating the two fetuses. Example of cord entanglement with Momo twins after delivery, one placenta, two umbilical cords on each side, but you could see how entangled and entwined those umbilical cords are. Like and follow for part two. Okay. Part two of my mono mono twins. If you haven't seen part one, go watch it now. The incidence of mono mono twins is about one in 10,000 pregnancies, but that incidence is increased with IVF and zona manipulation. So this is an ultrasound of a set of mono mono twins at nine weeks. And getting an early ultrasound in pregnancy is important for two reasons. Number one, establishing accurate dating of the pregnancy. And number two, if there are or is a multiple gestation, establishing what kind of twins or triplets or more they are. Here you see one yolk sac with two fetuses and very lightly, I'm gonna point with that arrow, you could see the amnion. At this early gestational age, the amnion is not fused to the chorion yet and it's kind of floating there. So this is the first indication that this is mono mono twins, but it could also be confused because they're so close for conjoined twins. But over time that will kind of play out and you will see they're not conjoined, they are indeed mono mono twins. As the twins get bigger, you can also do a special kind of ultrasound like this to confirm that they are indeed mono mono twins. You can also look at the placenta to show that there's one placenta with two umbilical cord insertions to the, into the placenta, no dividing membrane, and that they are indeed mono mono twins within the same amniotic sac. Now, mono mono twins have an increased risk of fetal and neonatal mortality for multiple reasons, but one of the main reasons is, is, for, is because of cord entanglement. As you can see here, the umbilical cords are inserted onto the placenta. They need to ideally be six centimeters apart, but sometimes they're closer than that, which can increase the risk of cord entanglement because there's no dividing membrane and those cords can kind of get wrapped around in each other. Example of mono-mono twins at 22 weeks, abdomen of A, abdomen of B, and cord entanglement in between. Now, cord entanglement, as seen here and just before on that previous video clip, is pathognomonic, meaning diagnostic of mono-mono twins. Now, cord entanglement can occur early in the pregnancy, later in the pregnancy, and to varying degrees. But what can happen is because the cord gets tangled up, it can get too tight and cut off circulation and blood flow to one or both twins, causing demise of one or both twins. Um, because of that high risk, it's kind of standard practice to hospitalize mono mono twins at 26 to 28 weeks for continuous fetal monitoring until delivery, but depending on the degree of cord entanglement or other factors that may be at play, hospitalization may occur at viability, which is typically around 24 weeks. And delivery will typically occur between 32 and 34 weeks, depending on how the twins are growing and how they're doing on the monitor. If you have more questions about mono mono twins or any other types of twins, put them in the comments and I will try to answer them.